Ladies and gentlemen, they call me Kistanion. And right now, I'm chilling with Ade Shokpe on Afrobeat Podcast. Tune in, locked in, feel the vibe. Ah, now, Mickey knows I'm doing video now. Hey, we. <laughs> yeah, so have fun. Enjoy. Enjoy the show. Enjoy my own podcast, pass. Love you. Mwah, mwah. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to another edition of Ali Shopper Live, the official Afrobeats podcast here in London. We appreciate the support. Keep subscri subscribing. Keep those subscriptions going up. Uh, we love it. The bigger we get, the better we can support our people without waiting on other platforms to do that for us. As always, uh, unfortunately, I didn't bring my energy god. This is supported by the energy god, energy drink. Drink and be yourself for us, by us. Let's make sure we support ourselves um, in the heart of London, high in the skies, about 50 or 60 floors high. I've come to meet one of the superstars out of Nigeria dominating the Afrobeat scene. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a brother that has done it over and over and over again. Mm. He's shining like money this time, the money is long. He's the incredible maverick, Kiss Daniel. Brother, yeah, ugly best, you you're know. shining, bro. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, first of all, how have you been? How, how have you been? How's life been? Life has been great. Yeah. You know, beautiful. Uh, I'm grateful to be alive. Facts. Yeah. Facts. Listen, um, this year is an incredible year for you. Not only have you dropped a fantastic album, yes. you're about to do great things here in london but yeah. before we touch that mm -hmm. london has been one of uh, your favorite cities in the world well, we've I, always well, loved place in the world. and yes. adored kiss daniel what what is it like for you whenever you come into london mm. the feeling is similar to whenever it is i enter lagos mm. you understand mm. london is close to it's close to Nigeria, it's close to lagos so it feels the same you know so I'm always excited to come to London because I know, yes, I'll meet familiar faces, definitely. Facts. You understand? And um, the culture, too, is there, you know, so, yeah. Music, um, you've been in this game now officially yeah. for years. about a decade. Yeah, but next year I'll be celebrating 10 years. Jeez! When you came in mm. with the hit record, mm. I want to know how young artists think were you thinking 10 years ahead or were you just thinking about tomorrow in fact when i had my first kid song i was thinking about that same year i had that song <laughs> i wasn't okay. thinking of a follow-up no i was just thinking okay because i told my dad that mm. if only one year like give me one year yeah let me try and do this music thing and see if it will pay if he pays, I'm not going to do my master's. I will focus on the music and make money and take care of everybody. So he said, okay, I'll give you one year. So that same year, I had Woji. Mm. And in my head, <laughs> Smash. Yeah, my and Smash. in my head, I was thinking, okay, boom, boom, got to share, like everything I can make from this song. <laughs> 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 Quick, we stack. Quick. I was thinking that would be the end of it. Hmm. In fact, social media shit and pick up and gone time. Absolutely. So people were saying something like one eat wonder or like blah blah blah, whatever it is they call it. So I was like, okay, if this is going to be the only one. Wow. Because I've heard news that it's not easy to make it songs. Absolutely. Do you know that back then to make hit um, each record that is harder? Now it's easier. Then it was because you have tools to, to promote it now. Yeah. Back then, you have to, have to create a hit. big song. <laughs> to have one hit song back then, <laughs> it was so difficult. It feels like, it feels like there's something, like somewhere, like, but, but I, <laughs> when I got the runner, yeah, yeah, do you understand? Yeah, it so it was so difficult. So having would you then, I just said to myself, that, okay, you know what? This is it. Maybe this is my own. Mm. One, yeah, let me just, but then I was lucky to be going out with a very wonderful woman at that time. Mm. 
Uh, let me just. No, no, carry on. Carry on. <laughs> I was yeah. yeah I was I was looking out to be dating one wonderful woman at the time. She was a Christian, so she is a Christian actually, because mm. we still talk. So after Woju, she kept on praying. Wow. Every night, 2015, before the remix dropped, wow. She fasted. You know that fasting that Christians do in the ah, beginning of the year? Ah, we don't play, we don't play, we She don't. fasted. I'll be sleeping sometimes. She would hold my hand. She would be praying. I'll just wake up. I'll just see somebody holding my hand praying. She was praying for a follow-up record. Wow. Wow. God bless this woman. God bless her so much. She was praying. Immediately came to pray. We talk with change. You can't come back. Pass. I'm not going to talk. My brother, my UK, my lost masters. She was praying for a follow-up record. And then we had the follow-up record. Wow. We recorded Lai April uh, 2015. And we dropped it in May 2015. Lai is one of the records that, you know, there are moments in, in life mm. where you hear a song for the first time. Yeah. And for the rest of your life, you remember where you are. Mm -hmm. I was driving in London. I parked in an Asda, mm -hmm. and I was listening to my brother, shout out DJ Neptizo, mm. on the Ultimate Afrobeat show. Mm. I was listening to his radio show, mm -hmm. and he just went, oh, this is brand new, Keith Daniel, blah, blah, blah. I was about to get out of the car. I just mm -hmm. thought, let me hear this record. Mm -hmm. And he just, boom, 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 straight. I know I'm crazy, but this is all I have for you, oh, for you, baby. <laughs> ah! <laughs> My God! <laughs> From that first listen, yeah, I listened to the whole record and I left the car. I sent him a WhatsApp message because mm -hmm. my show is the next day on radio. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, "Hey, mm -hmm. please, can you send me that Kiss Daniel record you just played?" Mm -hmm. There was a feeling that this was a smash record mm -hmm. as well. That's a good feeling. <laughs> Do you know? when you make a record that is going to be big that you think is going to be big i don't count how many times i've heard this uh, question but yeah. i no not really i don't know how big it will get but i i'm definitely sure it will reach my audience mm. is the the point is just know your audience Facts. once you know your audience you are good you'll not be confused Facts. And you will not be disappointed. Now, speaking about audiences, yes. Um, I've told you this a million times. Yeah. I strongly believe that there is no artist currently mm. um, on the Afrobeat scene mm. that has a wide range of an audience base mm. as a Kiss Daniel. Are you oh. aware of this? You have women as young as six and seven years old. Oh my God. I up guess. until 70 years old. Jesus. Are you aware <laughs> of this? I don't know if I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you I came to the Sold Out show yeah. at Britain Academy last year. Oh, yes. And being in that audience mm -hmm. again, yeah. just, and, and I look around, mm -hmm. you see the different. Mm. sections of women. First of all, mm. there's a direct connection between Kiss Daniel and women. I don't know mm. what it is, oh. but maybe you can explain. What exactly is the correlation between Kiss Daniel and women? I want to know. Mm. I think I know my own part. <laughs> 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 no, man, I like women, so... <laughs> maybe they, can, they could sense that this guy likes women, so... <laughs> and if there's no you know, like I said, with the audience base, yeah. it's very difficult to be a pop star, yeah. an Afrobeats pop star, yeah. who's making music that's really ringing in the clubs of young people, yeah. to still have older people that mm. love your music just like the young people. Mm. Was mm. there any, is it your lyrics is, what do you think connects okay. to so, the, you know, the older people? Okay, so, um, I... Honestly, I can't put, mm. I can't really say what it is about a Case Daniel record that resonates with 
that wide you know range of audience but i just know for a fact that whenever I, i'm trying to create music let me use the word create music not even making music yeah. now creates music i try as i try as hard as possible to be relatable mm. do you understand i want to say the things that anybody can just say at any time of the day collect your money collect your money wake up wake up do you get me i want to be that do you understand? I want to be that guy that is so down to earth that you can connect with on all levels, even if he drives a Rolls Royce. Absolutely. You've dropped. It feels like you guys do think the same. Absolutely. You've, mm -hmm. Not only have you dropped hit singles, you've dropped record albums, but there's also one thing about you when it comes to <laughs> dropping albums. And mm -hmm. I, I actually was, my attention was brought to this mm -hmm. on social media. Yeah. You're one of the few people mm -hmm. that consistently drops a minimum 20 records mm. in an album. Mm. At a time when everybody's trying to package maybe 10, 12 songs, mm. they're not too sure whether you just say, oh, well, no bad songs, 20. Mm. This mm. one, 20. Maverick, 20. Origi, 20. <laughs> what? Why? Why do I go for 20? <laughs> why do you feel like your audience that we're, we're, we're mature enough yeah. to receive that many songs at a time? Mm, okay. Uh, I think it's a first and first only point learning. Yeah, there's because I make <laughs> too music. many hits. I'm in studio rats. Hmm. I mean, I'm always in the studio. So I'm always recording. So I have like loads of songs. If it's possible for me to put fifty songs on that album, I'll put it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you see the player, feel it. Only my name play fifty songs. I'll put it. Because I'm always recording. I'm also have loads of songs on my laptop. All these songs we just waste. Who come and package them, put them in a themed album and drop them. So most most times when I'm like for instance the Maverick album, okay, so this is the thing about the Maverick album. We actually have three albums, uh, two albums before the Maverick album. Now we have Call of Happiness Yellow, which is 10 track album. Yep. And we have the Afro Classic album which was supposed to drop last year which is 12 track album <laughs> so <laughs> so the afro classic album is you know the classics the kiss daniel classics yeah. and all that the color of happiness is um the vibrant sound the buga the cough the rtid yeah. the shuperu that kind wow. of thing yeah so i i had like different things for the albums yeah so the maverick album um, the idea came from when I, I called on Emperor Jesus to come on board. So he said to me that, you know what, let's try and recreate the, um, the early Kiss Daniel, the lyricist Kiss Daniel, you know. So I said, okay, fine. That means I have to go back to the studio to be intentional about this move. Wow. Okay, so give me some time. So he gave me like a couple of months. So I went back to the studio and made most of the songs were made within like two months, three months. And then that's how Maverick came about. You mentioned Emperor Jeezy. For anybody yeah. that's just getting on the Kiss Daniel train, oh. that was the introduction into the music game. That was the yeah. label that introduced you, the partnership that you had. There was a, a falling out at the time. Everybody had to separate, go and mm. build and develop. But you chose to reach out back to him. Yes. And mend whatever was at the time. Talk to Actually, me about we, that decision. We were already friends though since last year. We were already friends. That we were chilling. It was in my house last well, year now. Yeah, when you did like a, a little O'Shea video with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah we we we're friends. Like we really don't die the matter since. Mm. So there was no issue. We were just guys and friends and we were just talking and I was like, okay, you know what? Bro, I want to like do this thing, do this, do this thing. Can you hold it down for me at the label? Can you hold down the label for me? Wow. Any time I'm recording and making music and I say, oh yeah, sure, you can. It's okay, fine. Do it. Wow. And that's it. 
that's that's another lesson that you're you're, you're teaching us there mm. about growth, yeah. about maturity, about just the fact that you could even say, listen, let's we've forgotten about that, but this yeah. guy is still a good guy yeah. when it comes to a case Daniel brand. Yeah, and I, music. I think he's definitely one of the people, one of the people that I can trust the case Daniel brand hmm. with. Like I can say, okay, fine. You know what? I know so you get passion, you know, for this thing. I know you have true love for this brand. Not necessarily me, not yeah. necessarily what to be about Daniel, but the brand is Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. I know you have love for this brand and I know you want this brand to grow. Even that time that we were fighting, he still sent me texts. If I'm doing something wrong, he will still text me that. Kish, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to go here. You're not wow. supposed to. And we are fighting him. <laughs> We are, like we are fighting on social media. You see, like, what did you? I'm seeing you do this. What are you doing? Is that smoke I see in your hand? You are not supposed to be smoking. This one, that, that's you know. He's just trying to just show me that he's still concerned. Yes. And most people didn't see that side of him. Facts. So I'm the only one seeing it. So yeah, he's a good guy, and he loves the brand kiss, Daniel. You mentioned your laptop. Um, your friend Skibby was on the podcast. Yeah. And he said. If he can steal that laptop. Never done well. I think by the more got those up. Him and you. You are like cat and dog. You no fight man. every time because you guys it's are the, genuine. Jelly to my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I like what you <laughs> well, actually I love him. He's he, one of my closest friends. He speaks extremely highly of you as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a crazy guy. But it's my boy. My boy. <laughs> In Maverick album, you said yeah. you don't know how to look for friends. Mm. No, I said I don't know how. Any only why any more pushing keep friends. Yes, I don't know how to keep, mm. but that doesn't mean I don't have friends. So the reason why I said I don't know how to keep friends is because I don't know how to look for people. Call and text people. Yeah. So and you know, once you don't do that from time to time like once you don't do that you just kind of like lose the connection hmm. but like somebody like skibby now is headstrong <laughs> <laughs> don't be so like why we are talking now you're going to call me i'll be like you still spoke to me today now you know what i still spoke to me today <laughs> we're talking about the whole industry and everything and i told him i was eating that's a real friend. friend. That's somebody, yeah, that's somebody that's dumb. Yeah, that's a real friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, but it's not everybody that's like that. And I'm also very particular about his lifestyle, his mood, his mm. feelings, his everything too, because I love him like mm. a lot. So we understand each other. So it takes only few people, mm. you know, to, so that's it. That's all. Most people actually took that um, out of context. So is that it? Is that the word? Oh, that that me that, that, that you don't know how to keep that, friends. It means that I don't have friends. No, oh, no. I do have friends. Anybody that's kind of like that was born and raised in Nigeria mm. and grew up in Nigeria mm. would understand that statement. Mm -hmm. That is basically I'm not one that will be calling. Exactly. And and a lot of people sometimes get sensitive about that. Exactly. That, oh, why me? You don't ask for me. You exactly. Don't for me. Yeah. Exactly. That means you don't you don't, you don't really care. like me. Yeah. You don't care about me. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. sometimes people like me. We're like that we just it's not like we don't care about we do care about you but it's you're just like, not used to yeah you're just yeah. not yeah used to yeah yeah because me for instance now i built i've built a world around like a world of my own in my head since when i was little because growing up i was very i was a fat kid like i was chubby wow i was very fat so i don't go out because the kids in the area they go make fun of you and all that ah, bullies, body, so and, yeah. bullies and all that so i always stay indoor so i was for a long time so during that time i always stay indoor i've, I've already built this Fantasy. imaginary this thing yeah. yeah so in that world that i've built in my head like i'm like very comfortable in that space so when I reintroduced myself to the world after I got trimmed down, I lost weight and I started, you know, chiking babe and all that, I got reintroduced to the world. I lost all forms of social skills. Because you kept that for a long time. Do you understand? Time. I don't know how to communicate. 
people still talk about the yeah. fact that Kiss Daniel never goes out. I don't know how to socialize with people. I don't know how to ah also I, just, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I'm probably <laughs> if I'm doing it and it seems like oh guys this guy is very social just so that mm, 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 something no just so that something has gone down. <laughs> <laughs> you having a little drink. Yeah, maybe I've like probably just sipped some, you know, <laughs> to be able to cope. I used to tell my my team before we get probably we, we packed, we're going out and we end, we're still in the car. I say, okay, no, just give me one, one shot. shot to be able to cope. To, lift up. <laughs> to cope. <laughs> Let's go. So yeah, there was that's pretty much it. There was an experience last year before your London show. Yeah. Um, your partner Empire had put up a dinner that you were hosting in London that we all came to. Yeah. Boom! And you came there. Buga was just going crazy at the time. Boom! Mm. Kiss Daniel jumps on the table. That's how you dancing. I remember now. <laughs> <laughs> but that video went crazy around the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One or two things. I did promote song that time. You know when I'm promoting song, yes. I always go crazy. Amy Ryan, hey. But first of all, yeah. I want to say well done to yeah. how you started to promote your singles with recording with people <clears throat> whenever they come into the house yeah that was a different side of kiss daniel that a lot of people hadn't seen mm. you know yes even though you were still in the playful videos mm. there was still a calmness about you mm. in comparison to everybody else mm -hmm. so everybody else in the videos they, they you know they go crazy but kiss daniel is still but we know that still you're having fun in a yeah, way yeah whose idea was to start that and um how did you think it was going to impact the world did okay. you expect our reactions all right so first and first everything that you see me do online or i put out there like idea wise yes like strategy yes is always my idea wow the dance routines for most of my songs for my songs yes. is me I just come up with all these ideas. And oh, except for cough. That one is my, my younger brother. Usman. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just playing the song in the studio and then we made a video that went viral. So he started like kind of like, you know, like twerking. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so after the video went viral, I just told him that you know what? This thing can work. This dance step might probably be it. Let's use it. Hey, Solomon Grandi. <laughs> <laughs> we've got, we've got. One of the biggest promoters in the UK. He's the one doing my show. One of the major players when it comes to the Kiss Daniel brand over the last couple of years. He's mm. just walked into the back building. We'll get you for a second. Yeah, mm -hmm. so let's let's keep talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. it. So it's always my idea. So the idea of making videos with artists when they come to Asgard, I think I I, I realized that it got to a point that um, most artists hit me up that they want they to come around come. and all that. You know, they just want to make music with me. And I, I get really excited when mm. they do so. When they hit me up, like, oh, wow. Ah, thank you. <laughs> you're, oh, yeah, one, now. You're, you're one of those. Oh, we bless God. Yeah. So, yeah, yes, come, let's vibe. So, when they come to the studio and they're having a good time, I always catch that vibe, like, okay, this is a very good feeling. And one thing about me is that I love energy. Everybody around me knows that I'm, I'm an energy person. Like, I read people. I know, okay, fine. This is a feel-good moment. I need to capture it then what sound do we use let me use the recent sound i'm promoting wow. and that's how it starts that's crazy that's how it started so and then the of course the lighting in as uh, asgard is like amazing that like you always look fresh everybody <laughs> whatever you're wearing looking clean everybody, <laughs> you know how many videos i've made it that's to be wearing on dying boxers are you for yeah. it <laughs> <Clean. laughs> That's Asgard for you. Nah, that's amazing, man. Yeah, now, this cool. album, yeah. for me, um, when I listen to the album, I think mm. I put it out mm. online somewhere. I must have put it on Instagram. Mm. I felt it was probably mm -hmm. the most Afrobeats mm. album that I heard this year. Mm. It had the, you know, even my, my videographer is not into that mm -hmm. because there was just so many elements of the Maverick album mm. that I don't know why I was surprised. Maybe because I, I expect everybody is trying to do so many different sounds. Yes. But yes. what you did with this album was yes. did different sounds, mm. but very Afro 
kind of feel. And then you were talking your talk. Mm. There were I think we, we, when we were making this album, we knew what we were signing up for. And we decided to play the long game with it. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> that. We decided to play the long game with it. Don't rush. Take your time. find out. Yes. Bit by bit. There's no need to rush. There's time. Just bit by bit. Because it's about the quality of the music, of the sounds, you know? So if it's only to go back, to go and if I done it, do you have big body? Exactly. Facts, <laughs> facts. And in addition to your singing, I yeah. think the style that you wrote a couple of your lyrics in, you were also almost like rapping, talking mm. in that. Mm. Like there were songs where it's almost like you know, the, the playful words yeah. were almost rap style, yeah. intentional, mm -hmm. you know. And for me, I felt, because Dano, who's a singer, dope vocals. I started as a rapper now in university. Ah. I started, in fact, I started as a producer first. <laughs> yes, yeah, so big shout out to MD Dolly. He was one of the biggest producers then in UNAB or FUNAB. Wow. Yeah. So at that time when we entered UNAB, it was UNAB. It was later they changed it to Change FUNAB. Changed to FUNAB. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he was one of the biggest producers in school. So fortunately for me, it was in my class. It was in my college. So I made friends with him. And then he taught me how to produce. Wow. So I started producing. But he has customer. At least used to go and meet him. But me, I don't have customer. So you go draw so back. I literally just produce on my own. And I've been staring at the beats like this. Hey, Talu Mahari <laughs> So from, from making these beats and staring at the beats on my life, instead of them to be wasting. And I said, okay, you know what? Instead of waiting for artists to come and sing on it, let me try. Wow. So, you know, now as I'm a boy in a rap, now be the first thing to come your head. Now, yeah. True. So I said, you know what? Let me rap. So I started rapping on some of my beats. Wow. So anytime I have the opportunity to meet with MD Dolly, then I'll play some of the songs. And sometimes I will lie that it is not me singing. That is one guy that just came from. <laughs> from, 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 from Milaro. Yeah, 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 yes. <laughs> so that he will say, he will be sincere. You know, if it's me now, he will probably don't want to, yeah, just say, he want to be, yeah. you know, considering my feelings. So ah, one guy just can't drop. Yeah, now, yeah. So I kept lying about it until when my cousin, came from Lagos and heard one of my songs and said he really likes it, that he wanted to bring me to Lagos wow. to meet with other artists. Do you get me? So I had to switch from rapping to singing. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's how I rebranded. Three things that I want us to touch on before we wrap up. Yeah. One, your babies. Mm. Your kids. Mm. You put them on a... a you know, an emotional song on there. Yeah, fair on, fair on you too. From the minute you you, you say you want to sing too, you and they, you know, you can hear. The, <laughs> talk to me about being a dad and, and and how that has affected you as a musician. We are seeing it now. We are seeing how it has affected me now. Look, when you know me now, back then, I'm probably not even be here doing this interview. Facts. You know. But having my kids just made me more human. Mm. Do you understand? And I, that's, I appreciate it so much. I could relate with people. I could connect with people. I understand people more. Yeah. Do you understand? And I always want to be a good person. Boys, um, boys are, you know, they <laughs> run around. They, they jump and up four. and down. <laughs> As, I but I'm, I'm training them to be militants. <laughs> no, me, I had strong ad run. Me, I'm not. Yeah, I know they not form kids. Than, of, eh? but, they, but their uncle looks like the one that will be spoiling Is this one that used to spoil them now? This tell. one that will be buying. Me, is strong and <laughs> militants. <laughs> not, you see, you go through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really Another thing is, I mentioned it before we started this interview. Yeah. From the first time I met you, mm -hmm. almost nine years ago, the first inception into the game, yeah. you mentioned to me off record that you had started to invest in property yeah. and real estate. Yeah. 
talk to me about that mindset. Because people see the, the amazing homes now and they think, oh, Kiss Daniel is mm. just... But this has been you from Since, the beginning. Yeah. Talk to me about that mindset. It was, it was, it's, I think it's quite... Um, what I'm about to say will be quite similar to what I said when, when we started yes. about uh, when I had my first song. So when I was thinking that this might actually be the only one, it was not only me, even my pillar. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, as we are, you know, making the money, we are both telling ourselves, <laughs> <laughs> my dear, send the word to me, Laura. In fact, my uncle, when I lost my, because I lost my dad in 2015, yeah. my uncle resumed the job. Immediately, I lost my dad. So it felt like my dad spoke to my uncle about it, that if any chance, no I know if you communicate with my son, you, Stay they give him, like, they let him know, say, do you understand? So he was on constantly on my case. You're making money. What are we doing? What are we doing with wow. your money? What are we doing? What are we doing? What do you... Do this, do this, invest, do this. So it has been like that since the get go. That's amazing. Man. So we've been doing this for over nine years now. And thank God. What would be your words to like young artists nowadays who are just coming into the game? Yeah. One big hit record, <clears throat> diamond chains, flashy cars. What would be a kiss Daniel moment where you sit down? What would you say to young artists coming into the game now? I think <clears throat> whatever it is is important to them now. They should just be sure that in the next five, ten years, it will still be important to them. But if it's not going to be important then the next five years, I guess it's not that important. Hmm. But whatever it is is important to them now that if they look five, ten years in the future, it will still be important or probably more important to them, then that thing is important that time. Facts. So that's just it. Parity is different now. Absolutely. You know, yeah, so it's just that me in your hotel, I don't know how to advise. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, Even I don't know. For old men like us, mm. they learn from that. Oh, thank because you. Because that's, that's deep. That just shows that you're yeah. basically telling them mm -hmm. whatever it is that they're involved in must be something that's for the long haul. Yeah. Don't yeah. just go and be investing in things that, that you're thinking about now, looking cool, looking sharp. Exactly. If, that, it, if that same thing will still look good to you after 10 years, 5 years, then it's probably worth it. But if it's not going to look that good to you after 5, 10 years, mm, it's not that worth it's it. It's not that worth it, yeah. You are in the UK. Mm. It's about to go down. Yeah. You had the sold out show at the Brixton Academy last year. Woo! Too many people couldn't get tickets. Yes, so on the day, like I like I was messaging solo one. I like, listen, everybody wanted tickets. Mm. Everybody, people were ready to pay any amount for tickets. Oh, now we're going to a bigger venue. Wembley Arena. God damn. Or OVO Arena. OVO Arena, absolutely. Yeah. Twelve thousand yeah. capacity. Twelve thousand five hundred. <laughs> Talk that talk. Don't forget the 500. So in case the extra 500, the piece of ticket don't finish after 12,000. <laughs> <laughs> it still remains 500. Talk to me about yeah. this show. Last year was one of the most exhilarating shows I've been to. Yes. Because, you. number one of your catalog and the amount of hit records you have, oh. the way you came on stage, the mm. entrance into the stage, the stage setup was fantastic. Yeah. And at the moment, Fans, we 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 didn't we didn't let you see it. Mm. So it felt like that wasn't enough for us. Mm. This year, what have you got planned for OVR? You know? Madness, madness. In fact, I'm putting everything in this show. I'm putting everything in this show. And uh, big shout out to Solomon Savage. Is is he has been my promoter since I started since I decided to start these shows. Facts. Independent. In, yeah, yeah. In, in London, yeah. And you obviously always continue to be my promoter. Like, it's someone that I, I, he has always believed, you know, in the dream. And he's still believing. And those are the kind of people. That's what I was talking to you about, like family. Keep yeah. people that really, yeah, that really... Can I, can I use fuck on this? Oh, oh, come on. We're grown-ups. Fuck. Fuck with you. 
<laughs> oh, because of my kids. Blue pit. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, mess with people that really mess with you. So it's it's a good feeling. So, but for this Wembley show, trust me, I can't start describing what we have planned, but I know it's madness. I've seen the blueprint. I've seen everything. I've seen the set list. We're doing like 35 songs. God damn! It's crazy. That's crazy, man. Yeah, it's crazy. So we are actually taking our time to deliver the best. And we will surely deliver the best. Absolutely. Yes. Finally, your collaborators are always handpicked in a way. Mm. The way you select your collaborators, even on the Maverick album, you yes. have Chiki, mm. you have Notes, mm -hmm. you are like Black, you select in a different way. Mm. Sometimes you don't go, most times you don't go where everybody goes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about selecting collaborators or accepting collaborations. Mm, okay, so I collaborate with people that I really like. Like, if I like you, I will definitely make music with you. If I, if you know, message me, I will message you. Mm. You know, so someone like Chike, for instance, now I, I really like Chike. Chike has an amazing voice. She's brilliant. She, you get, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And funny enough, <coughs> me and Chike suppose don't get songs since. But um, I think, I don't know what happened. I think he was going through, I don't know, but it didn't happen. But then it happened this year and it sounds really great. So for me to collaborate with someone, I have to like really, really like connect with the person, like like the person, as a person, not even as an artist. Absolutely. Like recently I was in the studio with Pato. Hmm. Cool. You understand? And already like, I like him, hmm. like he's my guy now. Right. You know, so he just took just one studio session, and I really like his person. Outside the music, Absolutely. outside the social, uh, the Instagram post and yeah. everything, like his real self. So uh, yeah, so that's I'll probably still make music with him like forever. That's amazing. You know, and give be stubborn boy. That one, <laughs> you'll be forcing that boy to come and record his. Tips. <laughs> I can't believe that. Usman, you listen to that that I was begging. I was coding, record. I, eh. said, I, I was in the Oriental said, in Lagos. He said, anybody that wants to get to Kiss Daniel calls him. But he's the only one that has access to Kiss Daniel. Don't mind he him. doesn't want to push you for anything. See, we're so full. I'm going to go to the studio. The way you talk to him, you know, I really, you know, meet him. Yeah. And hear him talk about other people like that, and I, I know that there's a genuine brother, brother out there. Oh, Hence why mm. he talks about Kiss Daniel like that. He, mm. he probably still messages tonight. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, yeah. I'm excited. Thanks again for this yeah. conversation. Uh, been a fan from the beginning. Yeah. I'm glad that you're still doing it yeah. at this high level. Thank you. Um, I told your brother you're a king with a throne. Yeah. who sometimes just doesn't want to sit on that ah. you know hmm. but you've got no choice now hmm. you have to claim your throne hmm. and that's what you're doing at Ovi Arena November it's about to be a madness go get your tickets Kiss Daniel Live here in London my brother it's an honor thank you thank Same you here. for your time thank you until thank next you. time it's peace and we are we are we are like Andrew. We are like Andrew. Whoa.